here is your new circuit one routine. The first thing is lunges. We're going to go walking lunges forward and backward. So nice big step, sink down into your lunge, come up, step together. You're going to go forward first. And then you're going to go backwards. So step back, sink down, push up and together. You might not need to go as far apart as on this one as you do going forward. So that's the first exercise, walking lunges forward and backward. Next, we're gonna do a shoulder exercise. You're gonna start in a W. You're gonna raise up overhead, bring your arms out to the side into a T, and then here in the T, pinch your scapulas together. And then relax, come back into the W, press up overhead, out to the side, pinch your shoulder blades together, come back into the W, overhead, out into the T, shoulder blade pinch. All right, you got the idea. Next, we're gonna do a side step squat with an arm raise. So you're going to step apart, and as you sink down into the squat, bring your arms up, come up, step together, apart, sink into the squat, bring your arms up. No weight on the, these exercises. Those are just some dynamic exercises. Work your stabilizers, work some mobility. So obviously you go both directions on these. Get set up in your squat position before you go down into the squat. So when you step to the side, set up first, then go into the squat. All right, next is side lunge steps. Take a big step to the side, do that side lunge. That lead leg is gonna be your push off leg. Step together. Side lunge, all the weight here and push up. Side lunge, weight on the front leg, push up. And then obviously the same thing in the other direction. That lead leg is the one doing the work. All right, and we're gonna finish circuit one with a rotational plank. So you're gonna come down on the ground, on your forearms, get set in your forearm plank first. You're gonna rotate to the side, come back to center, rotate to the other side, back to center. You may, not, you may need to reset your feet on every one. And I want you to pause briefly, like a two count, in each position. All right, those are your rotational planks. And that's circuit one. All right, guys, here is circuit two. We're gonna start circuit two with sumo squats. So grab your kettlebell or dumbbell, go into a nice wide squat stance, and then sink down, let your kettlebell come all the way to the ground if you can, stand up tall. Good form on these squats, stand up tall on every single one. Try to tap the kettlebell or dumbbell to the ground. Make sure that your knees stay wide and you push your butt back as you sink down. All right, sumo squats are first. Next up is concentration curls. So for these, you're gonna sit down on a bench or a ball, something where you can be seated. You're gonna use your, your inside of your leg for the concentration curls. So you're gonna Put your elbow inside of your leg and curl the dumbbell up and then back down. So keep that elbow in place. That's what makes these a concentration curl. You're keeping your elbow in place, not moving it around. Okay? Obviously, you'll do both sides. The next exercise is if you have a fit ball, you're going to do hamstring curls. So I'm going to demonstrate that first. If you don't have a ball, I'm going to show you an alternate exercise called hamstring walkouts. So if you've got a ball, you're gonna lay on your back, put your heels on the ball, arms at your side, press your hips up off the ground. The key is to keep your hips up the entire time and curl the ball up towards your butt and then back out. Keeping your hips elevated the entire time. Keep them up as you curl out and back. All right, if you don't have a ball, the alternative is Hamstring walkouts. So you're going to go up like in a bridge and you're going to walk your heels out all the way as far as you can and then walk yourself back up. Try to keep your hips up. Walk your heels out. Walk yourself back up. Okay? So those are hamstring walkouts if you don't have a ball to do the curls on. The next exercise is a dumbbell bench press. Pretty straightforward, but I will demonstrate anyways. If you don't have a bench, you can do this on the floor, or if you want 
do it on a ball, no more challenge, that would be great too. So the key with the bench press is you don't want to hurt your back. So keep your back flat on the bench by bringing your knees up. Keep your dumbbells here at your armpits and then press up and together. And then bring them back down, press up and together. Making sure that you keep your back flat against the bench the whole time. Keeping your legs elevated will help you with that. The next exercise is standing fire hydrants. So for this one, you're going to balance on one leg, leg bent, other leg is also bent, and you're going to bring that leg out to the side and back. So both knees are bent, and you're going to kick that knee out to the side, keep the whole leg moving together, and then obviously do both sides, so you're going to switch sides. If this is really easy for you, you can add a band around your knees, so you're pulling the band out and then back in. And then the last exercise of the circuit is overhead triceps. So you can use a kettlebell or a dumbbell or dumbbells on this. Stand up tall, bring it down behind you, and then straight overhead. The key with this is that you, first of all, hit yourself in the head with a weight, but also you don't want to be arching your back. So keep your lower abs engaged, keep your glutes engaged, so you're standing up tall, keeping a nice straight line or as straight as possible from shoulders to your hips. You don't want to be bending your back with this. All right, that's circuit two. All right, hey guys, here is circuit three. So the first exercise is a back crossover toe tap. So you're gonna bring that, that leg up, and you're gonna bring it behind you, and over to the side and tap your toe to the ground. Come back to center, bring that knee up, back, tap your toe over. You should really feel this here in your hips and glutes. So you wanna reach over as far as you can, and balance on this one. If it doesn't feel very challenging, you can add some elevation to your step. And same idea, bring that high knee up and then cross over and tap behind you. High knee up, cross over, behind you. Okay, that's if doing them on the floor becomes too easy. The next exercise is push-ups. Regular push-ups, hands wide of your shoulders. Just go up and down as low as you can with your elbows kicking out to the side, a little bit wide of your shoulders. If you can do like 25 of those without too much problem, then add some challenge by making them decline push-ups. So by decline, you're gonna elevate your feet so you're going downhill on the push-ups. Make sure whatever you're using for your decline, you're stable. And same idea, regular push-ups here. These become more challenging. If you don't have something to elevate on, you could do offset push-ups. You could use a kettlebell or a dumbbell and just put your hand on it, one hand on it, other hand on the floor. Take your feet a little bit wider. Do like five on one side and then switch sides. Make sure that you're even. For the first time that you do it, figure out how many you can do because they're gonna be a lot harder than your regular push-ups. And then increase your numbers as you go. All right, the next exercise is a high knee with a reverse toe tap. So for this one, you're going to bring that knee in front of you again, kick your leg back and tap your toe to the ground. It's not a reverse lunge because you're not actually putting your weight on that foot behind you. You're just tapping your toe to the ground. So from the side, it looks like this. High knee, tap as far back as you can and stay balanced. So you should feel this one also in your glutes, in your quads. It's a good balance and stabilizer exercise. Next up is our tricep push-ups. For tricep push-ups, you want to keep your hands a little bit closer together under your shoulders and your elbows are going to come in along your side. Okay, so that looks like this. These are a lot harder than regular push-ups. So you might need to do them on your knees to begin with. If you can do like 20 of those though, uh, on your toes, then add some challenge by doing them on a ball. So I've got a medicine ball here. Obviously this moves and rolls, so be really careful the first time you do it. Make sure your hands are centered. You're pressing into the ball. You're gonna take your feet a little bit wider than you would on a regular push-up to give you better support. And then same idea, lower yourself down and back up. Okay, full body 
body moving together. They're a lot harder and they challenge your core a lot more. So you won't be able to do very many of those to begin with. All right, next up is our high knee with front heel tap. So this one's kind of like a single leg squat. So bring your knee up, bend that leg you're balancing on, you're gonna bend at the knee, tap that heel in front of you of the elevated leg. Again, just like the other exercises we did, if this is super easy for you, elevate it. Once you throw in a little bit of elevation, it becomes a lot harder. It challenges your balance a lot more. You might not actually be able to tap your heel to the ground here. That's fine though. You can put a target in front of you and aim for the target or just keep that leg extending out in front of you. Then you're going to end the circuit with core. You get to decide the core. Mix it up 